We are back on Inside Politics. Our guest today, Dr. Thomas Schwartz, a professor of history and political science from Vanderbilt University. We're talking about foreign affairs this week. Uh, professor, let's start this particular segment with Russia. It's been kind of scary on a couple levels in, in recent days from over there. There was a nuclear weapons explosion over there. It came during a test of what appears to be a Russian nuclear-powered cruise missile. Uh, how did it happen? Do we know how it happened? How concerned should we be about it from a military point of view? I mean, a, a, a nuclear cruise missile sounds pretty scary. Well, uh, uh, President Putin had actually sort of previewed this in one of his speeches. And bragged about it. Bragged about it. Uh, clearly, not all the, uh, uh, to put it mildly, and then an understatement, not all the bugs were clearly worked out. And this explosion indicates that the technology is still um, in its developing stages. And uh, the Russian behavior here parallels, you might say, Chernobyl and some of the ways they reacted is then. Is it potentially that serious in terms of the environment? It does not seem to be yet. Um, I think uh, certainly uh, it, it, it um, not on the scale of Chernobyl, but it has, uh, it, it's alarming in a sense because the Russians have also shut down some monitoring stations and allowed and prevented actually full uh, uh, knowledge of what exactly the, the range of uh, radiation um, uh, that has happened. But occurred. the Russians have never liked those monitoring stations because it was part of a treaty that right. they agreed to and they ratified but we never did, and they did never liked the fact that the right. U.S. could get information off a treaty they didn't ratify. Right, and they, they're taking this as an opportunity to really get away from that. But is this potential cruise missile a game changer? Is it something that would further enhance a nuclear arms race between the two countries? Potentially, yes, although because we have pulled out of the INF, uh, the United States is going to be developing uh, missiles in this range, and so uh, technologically, um, the, uh, the advantage usually goes to the United States, but we could be seeing uh, a type of arms race between the United States, Russia, and China soon in terms of these uh, intermediate range weapons. While we're on the subject of Russia, there have been several large anti-government protests in mm -hmm. Russia, particularly in Moscow. Now, this has been over some elections going on within the the city of Moscow, but uh, the size of these have been a little bit surprising. Any particular reason to think President Putin's going to be endangered in any way by this? Um, I would say no. Um, it's it, it certainly uh, they're surprising that so many Russians would come out and protest, uh, given the, the the very big big barriers against their ability to really be ex uh, uh, able to be heard. Um, but it doesn't. I, I, I think it would be hard pressed to, to say that Putin is really in trouble now. Um, he, the, the most of the uh, the worst pain of the the sanctions and the rest has uh, uh, pretty much been handled. Um, in fact, uh, one of the interesting issues at the G7 is going to be President Trump's insistence that Russia should be readmitted and should be back into uh, having not paid a penalty really for their um, uh, their annexation of the U of Crimea or their because support. they were kicked out of that group. They were kicked out of that group after that. Another communist country that's having problems with protests, although not directly in that country, is what's going on with China and in Hong, Hong Kong. Kong. Um, this has kind of gone back and forth. It was, the, the protests had gotten smaller but more violent. Now suddenly they've gotten much bigger. What's going on over there? Is anything going to be happening to work this out between Hong Kong and China? Um, this is a very difficult one from the outside to see that it will end in any happy manner. Um, the Chinese, Hong Kong, for a lot of reasons, has a very different attitude and tradition than the mainland. Um, Hong Kong uh, citizens have had more self-rule, even under and and have gotten used to a, a a looser system, which has allowed a greater range of opinion under the British, and then even in the um, uh, subsequent turnover and the the, the ability, the autonomy they've had. Um, if the protests continue, it's hard for me not to see Beijing at some point decide to crack down. Um, they may do it using more police forces than military forces, but I, I, it, it seems to me that uh, this, is a, this is a threat to, the, uh, to, to um, the way in which the communist government rules China. So a Tiananmen Square situation is not totally out of it's the It's not out of the question. Maybe by I'm, police action, but not with, not with tanks? Not with tanks. I think they try to do it in a manner, um, perhaps also uh, uh, creating a situation where you have a uh, agent provo uh, pro provo provo provocative acts, perhaps done by people actually in the employ of the regime to give the impression that violence had taken over the demonstration and then they had to be suppressed. This all began, at least this recent round with the Chinese, uh, became after Britain pulled out and basically there was about a 50 year window, I believe, right. before Hong Kong is going to actually become a part of China. Right. 
but surely the people both in Hong Kong and China knew that over that 50 years there would begin to be encroachment about that. So this shouldn't be a big surprise to Hong Kong that they would China is increasingly trying to show more and more control, even though they don't fully get control until a few more years. It's yet. not a surprise, but you know, Hong Kong is also for China economically a very beneficial area because of the relative economic freedom um, in Hong Kong. It's their showcase. It's place. their showcase, and it's an extraordinary city, uh, very modern, and and in, in a sense, its citizens have had different expectations. Um, the extradition law that China tried to get in, uh, imposed on Hong Kong may have been one of those provoking aspects, a bit like, uh, uh, you know, I'm, I, I'm teaching now on the American Revolution, it's a bit like the Stamp Act. It's like one of those things that sort of suddenly brings home to people that things are going to change, and this is the type of thing that may have encouraged um, a much greater level of citizen activism for a desire for real liberties. With the Chinese economy overall suffering because of this trade war with the U.S., cracking down in Hong Kong has even more repercussions for them economically. They have to be very careful about doing that because not only do they lose face internationally by cracking down on their showcase city, but they may actually hurt their economy even further. That's true, but uh, I think in the end, uh, just as they did in Tiananmen Square, in the end, political power is what usually matters to the Chinese Communist Party. And if they do feel that Hong Kong is challenging that the monopoly on political power, I think they might be willing to take the economic hurt. Dr. Thomas Schwartz of Vanderbilt University is our guest. He's a history, uh, history and political science professor at the university. Back to continue our conversation after this break.